Good morning. Today we're going to read a story together from the Bible about a friend of Jesus named Paul. And at the time this story happens, Paul has been arrested because he wouldn't quit telling people about Jesus. And this is a story about how he was shipwrecked. Paul was kept in custody for several years. That means he was kept in jail. From time to time, he was called to defend himself before the Roman governor, but his case was never settled. At last, he said, I appeal to Caesar. As a Roman citizen, he had the right to have his case heard in Rome by the emperor himself. Very well, the governor agreed. To Rome you shall go. He was handed over to Julius, the Roman centurion in charge of prisoners bound for Rome. Julius had took it, taken a great liking to Paul. Some of Paul's friends, including Luke, went with him at their own expense. At first the sea was calm, but when the wind changed, the captain had difficulty getting their ship into port. It was autumn, and during the rough winter storms, ships used to stay in a safe haven. Don't sail any further, Paul advised. I know that we shall all face disaster if we go on with the voyage. But the owner of the ship wanted to get the cargo on its way, and the captain was eager to sail too. Julius paid more attention to them than to Paul, the landlubber. Besides, the wind was right for them to set off. But they had not gone far when the fair wind changed to a fierce northeaster. It howled and shrieked in the rigging and bore down on the ship's timbers. Heavy seas lashed the decks. The crew worked feverishly, roping down the loose fittings and securing the ship's boat. Then they crew threw cargo and equipment overboard to lighten the ship. For days and nights on end, they could see neither sun nor moon, but in any case, it was impossible to steer the ship. They left it to drift, driven by the wind and battered by the waves. The anxious crew and the frightened, seasick passengers were sure that they would never see land again. You can see there's, there's the ship being beaten by the waves. Then Paul called everyone together. You should have taken my advice, he reminded them. But don't give up hope. An angel of the Lord whom I serve appeared to me last night. God has promised me that every one of us will arrive safe on land, and I believe God. That very night the sailors found that the sea was shallower. They took soundings and were certain that the land must be near. Once morning came, they might be able to steer the ship ashore, but they planned instead to escape themselves then and there. Paul saw them trying to launch the ship's boat and told Julius, Stop them going, or we won't be able to get the ship to land. So Julius ordered them back. Then Paul said, We've had nothing to eat for a long time. So he took food and thanked God for it, and set them as an, ex an example by eating some himself. Everyone else ate too, and felt better for it. Then they waited eagerly for morning to come. And that's the end of that story. Just like we would do if we were together at church, would you close your eyes and bow your heads, and we will say a prayer together. I'll say a few words, and then you can say them after me. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for telling us this story about Paul. Help us to trust you like he did. In Jesus' name, amen.